Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Historic Challenges and today we'll check out the market, see what's available then. So there's Lorenzo 2012, Burn 2004 and Lawson 92. Uh, we can't afford all these guys so I'm going to buy them all which should still leave us with a hefty amount of diamonds. So well, how many have we got? So we've got 10,800. So if we get the maximum on this we should have 25,000 diamonds which should be plenty to buy whoever's on the market after we've done this challenge. So it's at Aragon. So let's see who we can play as then. So we've just bought Lorenzo 2012, but I don't want to do an 800 again. Obviously I did that last time. I think we'll go with Caparossi actually. We'll go with Lois Caparossi. So we're at Aragon, 35% race, difficult AI, well extreme AI. So we'll get started then. So Hayden is on pole then for this one. It's usually Nakano on pole. Ukawa's still on the front row. I'm guessing Barros is going to be there as well. So I'm guessing Hayden has swapped with Nakano this time. Uh, tire wise, I'll put a medium rear on. I don't think it's going to be that bad here. I'm going to need a hard or anything like that. So we are starting sixth position then. And we may as well just get straight into it. Hopefully it won't be too difficult of a challenge. But I would like a bit of a... It's just show me twice, doesn't it? That's a bit weird. Well, I suppose we have established in the last couple of videos this game is quite broken right now. So can't really be surprised by that. I'm in first person again as well. It's always helpful. Get ready for the lights to go out. Lights and away we go. Oh, we still haven't got anti wheelie on this bike either. Oh, it almost went <laughs> vertical out the start. So we go towards turn one. Biaggi around the outside. Lots of people around the outside. We've had a very, very slow getaway here. At least we can change the power mode on this bike. We couldn't change it on the last one. But we're down to ninth, so it's actually been a very, very bad start. But we're closing up on Burn now to the left-hand side of Burn. Not the inside of Burn then. Well, the inside of Chibber now. We've got a bit of damage from that, actually. Obviously, we tapped him a little bit. So we go... Oh, okay, we've just been rammed out the way by Pedrosa. Which probably isn't going to help the damage case. We've got back round his outside now, though. Back up into seventh place. So I have to go on the attack. Obviously, we've got eight laps. So that's plenty of time to maybe try and get through the pack, especially when uh, people like Biaggi are running wide. Oh, Barros is dropping through. Biaggi's just gone past him. Same with Melandri. I think Melandri might be the quick AI, although Rossi's just gone past me. Rossi 2012. Can we get the cut back underneath him? No, we can't. So that might have actually been quite bad to let him through because look at the way he's charging through the pack. He's definitely got some pace that I have not. So we're still in 8th place. This has not been a good start at all. And Stone is now going around the outside. So, yeah, we're closing up though. We're closing up the inside of Melandri. We couldn't quite make the, the move stick on him there. Flicking the bike over. If we can get past Melandri, we'll be back up into 6th place. It's around the outside of Melandri. More damage, more contact. We're trying to lean on him through turn 14. We're going to have to flick it over for 15. Oh, we've had contact. Oh, and I'm down. Right. I guess that was kind of my fault, but I was always going to be on his inside for the next part of the corner. I'm not sure why he didn't uh, just sort of let me go wide and just cut underneath. Let's go for attempt two then here. Hopefully this will be the last attempt. Lights and away we go, keeping the front down. That hasn't really worked because we've still not had a great start. We're still sick as we go towards turn one, although we got a better run the last time. We've just barreled in with just rammed Ukawa. We've rammed Nicky Hayden. Yeah, we probably want to redo that one again. And of course, Colin Edwards and Hayden's a crash, I think. Oh, and whoever that is, I think... Oh, Simon Shelley has just been absolutely rammed off by those guys. So this has gone awfully so far. We need to just hit the front and get in front of the car. Stop him getting away. Which we've just done by getting a pretty decent start there. We kept the front wheel down as well. We've actually just launched into the lead straight away. Okay, that was... Uh... Oh! Yeah, I, I, said, I spoke a bit too soon, didn't I, really? I think I might need to change bikes. This bike is terrible. It's worse than the 800 somehow. Uh, I thought the 800s were the worst, but in this game, no. The 990s don't seem great either. Or at least a Ducati 990. If we go into the first corner, we've... Oh, we've been absolutely overtaken by everyone on the outside. It's, uh, yeah, this bike doesn't turn very well. It, it wheelies a lot. So we've just bashed Barros out of the way. Got the inside of Biaggi. I think this is what you've got to do. You've got to be a bit aggressive. We've got his elbows out. We're back up into second. So it's actually not been the end of the world. Although Hayden's just gone down. I'm not sure what happened there. So at the end of this second lap then. We're actually quite close to Ukawa now. But Stoner is right behind us. He's probably going to go for the move into turn one. Yes, he is. We can't let him keep that. So we're going to have to get back in front of him. So it seems like the AI are much faster at the end of the lap, and I'm a bit quicker at the start of the lap, because look how much we're closer to a car now. I know I'm using loads of power mode too, and I'm going to have to save a lot of fuel at the end of this, but I need it to actually catch him. Well, I'm only re I was only meant to use it on the straight, so I just forgot because Stoner started attacking me to turn it back down. But we are 
quite close to a car now, so we're probably going to have to do what we did in Valencia and park the bus to save fuel. But I think we saved tyres there, but this time it's fuel. So we close up to Toru again. Oh, I've almost hit him. That's very, very close. It's really difficult to get the power down in first gear, which is obviously the fastest way to actually ride the bikes on this game, it seems, sometimes. But against AI anyway, just to power it out in a low gear. But it's quite hard to do that on a 990, of course. With no anti-wheelie. Here we go then, this is usually where we catch up quite a bit. He's not taking the best line through there. Life we're not exited the best. Massive wheelie. But he's looking back at us now with Carla. What's happened to Stoner? He's just dropped back. He was right behind me. But here we go for the lead then. Off this race. Past Ukawa. Up into the lead. Oh, he's just, he's just hit us at the back. What is Toru doing? He's giving me damage and he's just... Well, he's allowed Stoner straight past... Oh, actually, he's kept Stoner behind him somehow. Side by side with the pair of them, but... Yeah, I mean, I've been out breaking a car into that every time, so I thought I could carry way more speed in there, but apparently he still hit us anyway. Stoner's trying to go around the outside. That's not going to work out for you, mate. I think the rest of the pack are definitely coming along now. I'll see I'm slowing the pace. And Stoner's just trying to dive bomb us, and he's crashed! Stoner's gone down! Stoner's down! Oh, car was now taking the lead back off me, actually, which has took me by surprise a little there. Burn is down as well, but Stoner's just gone down. So that's really changed the... Yeah, I think, I'm guessing he rejoined in front of... Burn. We've now retaken the lead from Ukawa again. And we've actually got enough fuel left now, it should be. I mean, we might have to fiddle with the settings a little bit more, but Ukawa's just come flying back up the inside of us, and we're flying back up the inside of him. So this battle's not over yet. Stoner's now out of the picture, but Danny Pedrosa's turned up. Danny Pedrosa's come out of nowhere. So all of a sudden, I think it's actually Stoner's teammates now just turned up. And he, oh, he's just hit me, and he's now hit Ukawa as well. What is going on in this race with the AI? Being super aggressive. Obviously, Stoner went for a dive bomb that was never happening. Ukar was now down to third. Again, but I think Rossi actually just got in front of him. Rossi on the Ducati. R Do Rossi on the Ducati is up to second place. What is happening? Obviously, we've held up the pack. And this is the result of it. The front's has gone there. I don't know how I haven't crashed. That's going to allow Rossi to get through. I've got to be the lead Ducati, at least. We've got a big pack behind us now. Oh, Rossi had a look at the inside then. He's trying to force his way through. I'm trying to look behind and see what's happened to Ukawa. Ukawa's still down in fourth place. But this battle could go on to the end of the race, yeah. Oh, Rossi! Whoa! Rossi! What a move for Valentino there to take the lead here in Aragon. I can't really take that line down. I'm going to have to come back at him. Using up all the road I can, probably a little bit more than I should. Back over to power mode two. I know we've got to save that fuel, but he's just absolutely destroyed me there. With that overtake, well done to him. We are really, really low on fuel. I can't keep going into power mode 2 to get back in front of that. I, I think he's gone. I think he's checked out already. I'm going to have to have a look. But I think he's gone. Because he's already got half a second on me. Well, Rossi just absolutely checked out on that lap. He's 2.3 seconds ahead now. He's He's gone. So it's between me and Pedrosa for second now, I think. I'm not even going to get the 15,000 on this one. It's going to be only 12. So Rossi's just done the fastest up of the race, a 46.3, and I've just done a 49.4, 3.1 seconds slower than him. He's now 5.4 seconds ahead. I don't know how he has so much tyre left. I have nothing left. I used all my tyre and fuel catching up to Kawa in the first place. And my plan was obviously to do what I did at Valencia, but the difference is it's actually quite easy to pass here compared to Valencia, for the AI anyway. Because basically there's a load of corners you can dive bomb into, which is the AI strong suit. Uh, Colin Edwards, where has Colin Edwards come from? I did not even know who was behind me. But now Colin Edwards is the guy I'm battling with for second position instead of Pedrosa. So what happened? Well, he's gone now. I suppose he'll still be there. Oh, Pedrosa and Edwards are side by side behind us now. Yeah, Colin Edwards kind of took me a bit by surprise. Valentino has got this so easily won now. Just by making an opportunistic move. It seems like the, the 2012 bikes have that advantage where they have more power than everybody else, so they can just sometimes go for those moves, just get the power on a little bit earlier, and then risk maybe using a bit of tyre, a bit of fuel, just to s sort of swerve at the inside and then just use the next straight to gap you. And then that's it, he, he was gone then. I mean, I wasn't even catching him on the straight, whereas at least with Ukawa, I was catching him on the straight. 
because I was getting a better exit and using higher fuel map. Obviously, the Ducati is probably faster than the Honda in a straight line as well. So as we go through turn 15, Edwards had a look at the inside there, but I think it might be curtains for any of their attempts. I'm on to 0.0. I'm on to 0.1 laps of fuel. I didn't notice that. Please, please don't run out of fuel. That'll make me look rather stupid. Right, I'm going right into this last corner. Nice. Edwards has gone for the dive. Edwards has done it. Edwards has actually just pulled that off. So we're down to third place now. So we're going to get basically nothing. Edwards. That, well, that was a dirty move. But, wow, okay. I was absolutely destroyed by the AI in that one. Well, I'm a bit shocked, to be honest, because... Well, I could maybe accept taking second, and that would have been like a hard, a tough pill to swallow as it was. But Edwards, in the last corner, just rammed me out of the way and got second place off me as well. So third place with 9,000 diamonds. Uh, good job we got plenty in reserve, I suppose, from some of the other challenges. But that one went dreadfully. Obviously, it's Aragon, which is probably my worst track. I know I always say Magello is, but at least I can actually stay on the track at Magello. Aragon, I've never liked it. It's just not a track that suits with... You know, suits me particularly. And I probably didn't make the best bike decision either, but we did do the challenge in the end. We, If I'd not got third, we'd have to have done it again, so at least he didn't knock me off or something. But yeah, that really, really took me by surprise there, with Edwards just diving up the inside. Ukawa, bless him, ended up seventh, so we actually destroyed Ukawa's race. And what happened to Stoner? Stoner probably retired, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, he did, because he crashed again, didn't he, when he came back on. So have a look what happened to Stoner, actually. So on board with Stoner, then. We're going into this corner here. And I've just parked it where he wants to. He sat up. And a bit like Fodger, he's just gone in a bit too hot and just gone into the gravel and fell off. And then he's just rejoined the racing line, I'm guessing, yeah. And has been tagged from behind. I'm not sure why he sat up, to be honest. Because he could have just braked more. Because he wasn't actually really anywhere near hitting me. He just sat up and then just went into the gravel and fell off. So we're going to have a look at the race winning overtake here. Like, look at how, like, sliding and aggressive that was. He actually made contact with me. But that was it. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get the power down like he could. And I think I tried to make something happen on this straight, but I was just too far behind, and I couldn't dive into the corner. So that was him gone. He was checked out already. He already had half a second. So we'll look on board with Edwards then at the last lap. Here we go. I braked a bit early because I didn't want to run out of fuel. I didn't want to use so much engine brake, and he just sort of tapped me out of the way. And that was it, I couldn't do anything, I just, well, I was having to use power mode zero to not run out of fuel, I had no tyre left, that was it, and that was second place for Colin. So we get our 9,000 diamonds, which only brings us up to 19,800, so we're definitely going to be a bit, a, a few short in the next episode, I'm sure of it. Luckily things don't seem too expensive on this one, so we'll buy all of them, so Wayne Rainey, the Suzuki from 2007, and the Kawasaki from 2005. So we actually have 12,900 left. Obviously, that's before we buy anything in the next episode. But yeah, that was that was a really weird race. AI had so much pace. I managed to catch up Bukawa, which now I'm thinking about it makes sense, I suppose, because he actually sort of just dropped through. So even though he pulled away from everybody else, it wasn't necessarily because he was faster. It's just the people that were in front of the guys actually eventually came through were slower. It was like Edwards came from really far back. Rossi came from really far back. Stoner came from really far back. Pedrosa did as well, I think. They all came through the pack. And I think me backing up the pack actually ended up biting me. Because if I hadn't done that, it would have been between... Actually, I suppose Stoner would have still been there. But if Stoner had made his mistake still and crashed, it would have just been between me and Pedrosa. And I beat Pedrosa, so I could have... I did have the pace to beat Pedrosa. So, yeah, it was a maybe not the best tactical decision. But I had to do it because I was running out of fuel and I had no tyre left. So it was the only thing I had left in my arsenal, of course, was to just hit the front and try and hold the pack up a little bit. It worked before, but obviously it's different tracks and different circumstances. And we still got third, we still got some diamonds for it, so it wasn't a waste. Didn't have to redo the whole thing again. Yeah, that, that was definitely, I think that was the hardest one we've done. I, I think I've said that every time now, that, oh, this is the hardest one. Obviously, except the first time, where I said, oh, this is easy, I'm eight seconds in the lead. Uh, yeah, so don't give challenges at Austin. Give challenges at tracks like Aragon. I bet if we have, a tra if we have one at Bruno, I'm probably screwed. Uh, obviously, you can see the intermediate challenge here is at Kimi Ring. Uh, Obviously, I'm not going to do the intermediate challenge, but if we get a difficult challenge at Kimi Ring at some point, yeah, we might be a bit done there. So I hope you did enjoy that one. Obviously, there was a lot of contact, a lot of craziness, people crashing, things like that. That's usually what happens in these historic challenges for some reason, that historic AI seem to be more erratic than the regular ones. Whether that's just because they're a bit quicker, so they sort of interact with me a bit more, I'm not 100% sure. 
But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe. And I shall see you in the next video.